Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to talk about how to write positive acute angles, but first we need to recall what a reference angle is. Remember, a reference angle is an angle that is formed by the terminal side of the angle and the x-axis. Reference angles may appear in all four quadrants, and angles in quadrant one are their own reference angles. So, if we have an angle in quadrant one, then theta, whatever that angle is, is its reference angle. Uh, to find a reference angle in quadrant two, we do 180 minus the angle, or theta, Quadrant 3, it's theta minus 180. And quadrant 4 is 360 minus theta. Okay, but always, 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 always first make sure your original angle is between 0 and 360. If you need to use coterminal angles, you will. Okay, so let's look at a few examples just to refresh our memory on reference angles. So how do I find a reference angle for the angle 300 degrees? Well, where's 300? So what do we have here? We've got 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. So 300 would be between 270 and 360. So that's a quadrant 4. So what we're going to do is take 360 minus 300, and we'll get 60. That's my reference angle. Okay, well how about 120 degrees? Well, 120 degrees is an angle, excuse me, quadrant 2. So we do 180 minus the angle. So 180 minus 120, which is 60. And then example C is 40 degrees. That's in quadrant 1. And if we're in quadrant 1, it's its own reference angle. So the reference angle is 40. Okay, how about D? D is negative 425. Now, what did I say before about making sure that your angle, your original angle, is between 0 and 360? So what you want to do is you want to find a coterminal angle to negative 425 and then apply this chart. Okay, so let's take the negative 425 and add 360. So take out your calculators and put that in. Right? You should get negative 65. Not enough yet. So we got to add it one more time. So negative 65 plus 360 and you get positive 295. Okay? So that means 295 has the same terminal side as negative 425. So we're going to find a reference angle with this one, with the 295. That's in quadrant 4, so we're going to do 360 minus 295. And when you put that into the calculator, you should get 65. And that is my reference angle. All right, same thing with E. We have 730. We can't use that as is. We're going to have to subtract 360. So type into the calculator 730 minus 360 you get 370. That's actually still too big. It's not between 0 and 360. So take 370 and subtract 360. You should get 10. So 10 is coterminal with 730. We're going to use the 10. 10 is its own reference angle. So the answer is 10. Okay, now for part F. Find the reference angle for 5 pi over 4. Well, first we might want to change this to degrees so we know what we're talking about. Remember, we multiply it by 180 over pi. The pi's will cancel. And we're going to multiply straight across 5 times 180, which gives us 900. And then we divide that by 4, and we get 225. So if I want to find a reference angle for 225, 225 is in quadrant 3, so we do 225 minus 180. Type that into the calculator, you get 45. That's my reference angle. But because the angle was given in radian, we probably should put our answer back into radian. So 45 times pi over 180, put this over 1, multiply the tops, so 45 pi over 180. Now, in the calculator, you can reduce this, the 45 over 180. So type that in, 45 divided by 180, and then hit math, enter, enter, 
and you should get a reduced fraction, which is pi over 4, or 1 fourth pi. Okay? That's my reference angle. Okay, now why did I spend so much time reviewing reference angles? Because they're going to be helpful for writing positive acute angles, which is on the next page. Okay, so the directions are, rewrite each of the following as a function of a positive acute angle. This idea of a positive acute angle means a reference angle. Okay, positive acute. But there's more to it than just that. We need to take a few things into consideration. We need to take the quadrant, the reference angle, the type of function we have, and whether that thing is positive or negative in a respective quadrant. And the way we think about this is quarters are for sodas. It's a little acronym that helps me remember the four things that I need. So we also need to know sine. So let's put a chart for ASTC. This tells me positivity, where everything is positive. Sine is positive here, tangent is positive here, cosine here, and all are positive here as well as their respective reciprocals. So if I want to find sine of 189 and I want to rewrite this as a function with a positive acute angle, we need these four things. We need the quadrant that this is in, the reference angle, the function, and the sine. So let's just draw a quick sketch. 189 looks like it would be in quadrant 3. Okay, 189. So you don't need to draw the sketch. If you could do it without it, that would be great. But we are in quadrant 3. How do I find a reference angle in quadrant 3? I take the angle, 189, minus 180, and I get 9. Now, F stands for function. Which function am I talking about? Sine, cos, tan, cosecant? I'm talking about sine. So the function we write is sine. Now, S-I-G-N is what S stands for, whether it's positive or negative. So we're in quadrant 3, and you want to think, all students take calc. In quadrant 3, tangent is the only thing that's positive. So that means sine must be negative. So we put a negative here. And now the fun part is we get to read this from bottom to top. Okay, so read it from bottom to top. So we say it's negative sine of 9. And that's the answer negative sine of 9. We rewrote sine of 189 as a function, still sine, but now instead of a positive 189, it's a positive 9, which is acute angle. This is my positive acute angle. This is a bigger angle. So if you were to type this into the calculator and then type this into the calculator, you'll get the same thing. I'd actually like you to do that now. Pause the video and put sine of 189 into the calculator and put in negative sine of 9. And you should get the exact same decimal. Okay, hit resume when you're ready. Alright, the decimal that I got was negative point one five six four dot 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 dot. Okay, so that shows you that you did the right answer, that they're both negative, you did the right work. Okay, so the same concept for number two tangent of 315 degrees. I want to write this as a function of a positive acute angle. So we need a Q, an R, an F, an S. If you need the picture, draw it. So 315 is an angle in quadrant 4. How do I find a reference angle in quadrant 4? I take 360 minus the angle, which is 45. Now what function am I dealing with? Tangent. And in quadrant 4, is tangent positive or negative? Well, let's look up here. In quadrant 4, the only thing that's positive is cosine. So tangent must be negative. So read it from the bottom to the top. The answer is negative tan of 45. Okay, now again, type this into the calculator just the way you see it. And then type this into the calculator just the way you see it. And tell me what your answer should be. Hit resume when you're ready you should get about negative one both times, okay? So this is showing you that we're able to rewrite something that is, is equ it's equivalent, okay? Now, example three is a little tricky because 545 is over the 360, but just like we did on the other page before, we're gonna first use our coterminal angles. So let's subtract 360. So 545 minus 360, should give us 185. 
so coterminal tells us I could do cosine of 185 instead. So now we're going to do Q, R, F, S. So 185 looks like it's in quadrant 3 again. How do I find a reference angle? I take the angle minus 180 and I get 5. The function that I'm dealing with is still cosine. Now what do I know in quadrant 3? A, S, T. Tangent is the only thing that's positive. So cosine must be negative and we read it from the bottom up. So negative cosine, so negative cosine of 5. And that's the answer. So this is going to be the same as this, which is going to be the same as this. So pause the video and put all three of these in the calculator and see if you get them all to be the same decimal. All right. I got negative 0.996 approximately, and they're all identical. Okay, awesome. Let's see if you guys can try numbers 4 and 5 on your own, the, and 6 even. The concept, though, is with these is that they need to be positive first between 0 and 360. So you may have to do a coterminal angle like example number 5, or excuse me, 3, like example number 3. So try these on your own, and then hit resume for the answer. All right, here are your answers. All right, let me go over them real quick. So the first one, I couldn't use the negative 250, so I had to add 360 to make it coterminal, and that gave me 110. And then I said, okay, 110 is an angle in quadrant 2. I found the reference angle to be 70 and the function to be tangent. So negative tan of 70 was my answer. These are all, even this one, all three of these should be equivalent. Okay, now number five, again, I couldn't use the negative 240, so I added 360 and got 120. So I'm doing this with secant of 120 now. All these will be the same. So 120, again, is an angle in quadrant two. I found the reference angle by doing 180 minus 120. I get 60. And then secant is the function, and it's negative in quadrant two. Now just to review, A, S, T, C. S in quadrant 2 stands for sine is positive. Secant goes with cosine. So if we were in quadrant 4, then it would be positive. Okay? So again, here's another example, ASTC. First, I had to change it to degree, and I got 225. And then I said, okay, that's an angle in quadrant 3. I find a reference angle by doing 225 minus 180, and that gives me 45. The function I have is cotangent. And then I have, it's positive. Well, why is it positive? In quadrant three, the only thing that's positive is tangent as well as its reciprocal, which is cotangent. So that's why it's positive. Remember, this C is for cosine, not cotangent. So T is tangent, and therefore cotangent is positive as well. So we're a positive cotangent of 45. Now, technically, this answer needs to be put back into radian. So cotangent of pi over 4. Okay, I know that pi over 4 is the same thing as 45. This is actually the more appropriate answer. This one is not accurate. Okay, so how did I get it though? I did 45 times pi over 180. Put this over 1. So 45 pi over 180. And then I simplified the fraction 45 out of 180 and I get 1 fourth or 1 fourth pi. Okay, so jot down any questions that you might have, and we'll go over this tomorrow. Have a good night.